Today is about celebrating a milestone. And I'm going to celebrate by doing something that I love. If you want to find out what the milestone is and how I'm going to celebrate, well, you're in luck because you're invited to come along with me. So as mentioned, today is a day to celebrate. Now, before I tell you what I'm celebrating and how I'm going to be celebrating it, I do want to give you a little bit of a backstory, some back history, which will lead us up to today. Now, many of you have been with my channel, already know this information. Some of you may not, so I want to share it with those who may not know and just go into a little bit further detail. So that might be a clue as to what we're doing today. So my YouTube journey started all the way back in 2010. I've been making videos for almost 14 years now. And back then, I didn't really know much about YouTube other than it was just a platform for sharing videos. I knew that you could put out videos, people could watch them. And I knew that I sometimes went to some fun and interesting places and thought maybe others would want to see those places too. And back then, YouTube was a lot different than it is now. There was no algorithm, there was no notification bell. It was much more simplistic. So I started putting out videos with very little effort put into those videos. I had no experience with editing. I basically just cut up the videos, the video files, maybe put a fade in or a fade out, but that was it. I didn't talk in the videos. I didn't put my face in front of the camera. It was just me pointing the camera at whatever I was seeing or doing. And back then, the way YouTube worked is that when you gained subscribers, those subscribers were notified automatically whenever you put out a new video. So say for example, if I had 300 subscribers, each new video I put out, every single one of those subscribers got notified that I had a new video, which in return helped those new videos get views really quick. And all my videos at that time started gaining several hundred views, even though my channel was small, just because of the way YouTube was set up. Today, it's a much more complicated system where YouTube puts out your video to some of your subscribers, some of them as recommended, and sees how it does, and then from there, we'll share it with more. It's not the way I enjoy that YouTube does it, but that is how it is today. And you have to do the notification system, ring the bell. It's a whole mess. YouTube was much simpler back in the day. Regardless though, after several years of me just doing that, putting out videos, keeping it very simple, not knowing what to expect, not knowing if my channel was gonna grow, my channel did start growing. And after several years, I reached my first 1,000 subscribers. I did a little celebration of it, just stating, you know, hey, this is where I'm at, this is how far I've come. I didn't know this was gonna happen, but I'm here today to celebrate 1,000. Around that time too, I also learned that you could also monetize your channel, that you could turn on monetization to earn ad revenue. So when the ads are played before and during videos, the content creators get a small percentage from people watching those. At that time though, I didn't turn it on. I just wanted to keep it very plain and simple and not worry about trying to earn money. Well, soon after that 1000 mark, my channel kept growing and growing and growing. And before you knew it, I had several thousand subscribers. So I decided to turn on monetization, started earning revenue. And almost every month, I was getting a paycheck from YouTube, which was pretty awesome in my book. Fast forward even further, come 2018, I decided to quit my job of five years and do YouTube full time. Now in order to help that transition, I did do Uber and Lyft as well as my YouTube channels. I did Uber and Lyft for about six months just to kind of fill in the gaps. And then as the channel kept growing, I was able to stop doing Uber and Lyft and just focused solely on the channel and putting out videos. Well, thankfully it worked because here in 2023, I'm still doing YouTube full time. It is my source of income and I do consider it a career. Some may argue that, but to me, I do work at putting out content. And I do earn a paycheck for doing that. So with that being said, I jumped ahead a little bit too much. After getting monetized and leaving my job full time, I did reach my first milestone and my goal of reaching 100,000 subscribers. I got my play button and that was something I've always wanted to have. And I, in my eyes, it just says, hey Jay, you did it, good job. This signifies you reached a significant goal on YouTube. So fast forward after that, I set myself another goal. I said, let's hit 200,000, let's double that. And I knew that there was a good possibility it happened, I just didn't know when. 
So a couple years later, here in the beginning of 2023, I started creeping up on the 200,000 mark. So on my community post earlier this year, I stated my goal right now is to reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of summer 2023. Well, I'm happy to say I accomplished that goal and surpassed it, kinda. I say kinda because I officially passed 200,000 subscribers on the first day of fall. <laughs> I was off by one day. I will say I'll contribute that to a margin of error. You know, maybe subscribers didn't update in time or something like that. Regardless, I was close enough. I count that as a win. I reached my goal of reaching 200K by the end of summer 2023. And just off by a few hours, I accomplished that goal. So today, I'm here to celebrate that accomplishment. And if you couldn't tell earlier with what you heard, I'm going to be celebrating it with something I love to do. So if you couldn't tell already, we are here at Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, here at the Jim Thorpe train station. And I do have my ticket for my open air car train ride on the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway, brought to you by the Reading and Northern Railroad. Now, I have done this run numerous times. I've ridden the open air car, the caboose, locomotive cab, crown class. So I've rented a bunch of times, made multiple videos. But today is more about me just enjoying the moment, being here, enjoying my train ride, and celebrating my milestone. Now, since we have ridden it multiple times, I'm just gonna give you some highlights along the way, showing you some of the scenery. We are here just on the end of September. I think today is the 28th, I believe. Yes, today is the 28th, so just a couple days left of September. Fall foliage is starting to change. It's not anywhere close to peak, but we will see some colors along the way. I do see some, a little bit of reds and some yellows starting to make their, their colors known. But I'm also gonna celebrate one other way too, but that's not gonna be until after the train ride. So if you wanna find out what that is, keep watching. looking for a haunted trolley tour they're coming soon here in Jim Thorpe this book now at jimthorpetrolley.com if you don't this guy may come and get you I underestimated the weather today it's supposed to be near 70 and sunny it's cloudy in the upper 50s I went to the mock chunk 5 and 10 store picked up myself a new hoodie just my color just my size so I'll be a little bit more comfortable on the open-air train car ride How you doing? Okay. Okay, I'm going in car number 21. <laughs> Spring Song, I believe is the name of this one. I always love the, the paintwork on the inside. Blue skies, map over there, some wildlife, and some more wildlife over there. Closely, you may recognize the voice of an aerator today. Beyond the town's namesake, Jim Thorpe remains true to its heritage, boasting many Victorian era buildings that great.
Brian. Thank you very much. You're Thanks welcome. Again. Thanks, guys. That was worth trip. Oh, am I glad I bought this hoodie? It was supposed to be sunny and in the near 70 degrees today. Now we're close to it. Mother Nature did not cooperate with the weathermen. And in case you didn't recognize the voice, that is my good friend Jamie Macon. She is a friend, fellow content creator, a car host on the LGSR, and today, narrator on the LGSR, a friend of many talents. She did a fantastic job. I have to say that she, I told her this herself, she's a perfect fit for this railroad and for this job. Reading in Northern, especially the passenger excursions, have some of the best and friendliest employees around. They're always smiling, happy to answer your questions. The one car host even asked, like, are you enjoying your ride? I'm like, absolutely, I am. So this is why I decided to come here and celebrate my milestone on the LGSR, specifically the Spring Song Open Air Car. But I do want to celebrate one other way. You want to know how that is? That is with a frozen treat. And lucky for me, there's an ice cream stand right here, right next to the train. Can I get a regular size strawberry shake, but can I get that on the thinner side? Got myself a strawberry milkshake here at Woods Ice Cream. It's pretty much 100 feet away from the train station. I asked it for the thinner side. I like thin milkshakes, not really thick ones. Vibrant pink or red for strawberry. A lot of flavor to it. I will say that, but it's good. So I did want to take a few moments <clears throat> to discuss a few more things with you. Just to kind of give you a better background of myself, my channel, and let you know how things have progressed over time. So, some of the things I've already said earlier during my spiel about reaching my goal, my milestone. So on my channel, you know, doing it 14 years, things have changed over time. And I've come to learn, not only through myself, but from others, that people don't always like change. They don't always accept change. They don't want change. I am one of those people. I don't like change. I'm the kind of person that if something's working, to kind of keep it the way it is, or, you know, since you don't know the outcome of something, don't risk it. Well, those thoughts have kind of changed over time from my personal experiences. So my channel has changed a lot. It's evolved over time. It's kind of hard to be successful if you don't change and adapt given different circumstances or situations. So just some examples of how my channel, including myself, has changed. As I mentioned, when my channel started out almost 14 years ago, I did no talking, no narration. It was just point and shoot and that was it. And it worked for a while, but when I, when I started talking to the viewers, I started talking to the camera and put myself in front of the camera my channel started growing even more because people were able to connect with the person behind the camera being me another thing that happened is that i started doing live streams started doing what i call random live streams or drive streams where we'd all be in the car and just drive around and whether it's halloween time christmas time or just a regular any old day just to do live streams i started doing those i uh, started what I called Sunday Night Live during the pandemic, which was a weekly live stream I did every Sunday night. Did that for over a year. I also collaborated with a lot of people, met a lot of people, became friends with a lot of people, some people I stopped being friends with, and that's just is the way life is. That some things, and that just goes to show that that's how life is. Some people you meet, they stay in your lives for longer times than others or shorter times than others. Some people are still in my life, some are not. But again, that is how life goes. It's all part of the experience. And with that being said, I don't really do live streams anymore. I stopped doing Sunday Night Live. And there's a few reasons for that. Namely because my heart wasn't behind it anymore. As fun as they were, as much as I did enjoy them at that time, I stopped having fun, stopped enjoying it. I always ran into network issues, stream quality issues, trying to plan what I was gonna do for the live stream. And more importantly, having to plan my schedule around the live streams. You know, it started affecting time with my family, affecting time with friends. It just wasn't something I enjoyed doing anymore. So that's why I stopped doing Sunday Night Live. 
stop doing the live streams as much as I did. I do one here and there occasionally, but I'm more so primarily focused on edited, better quality videos. My content has changed too. I used to do some videos, which were food review videos. I called it Chow Time with JP. I used to review different food options, whether it was at a fast food place or having food items sent to me from a subscription box or even from the viewers, which was a lot of fun, but I don't do those anymore because number one, it doesn't really fit the mold of my channel. My channel primarily is focused around adventure and exploring with a few of my personal interests mixed in. But also, once I survived COVID, I changed my lifestyle. I don't eat a lot of the same foods I used to. I don't eat as much as I used to. So it just wasn't feasible for the channel to bring it back or to continue doing it. And with all those changes, it upset a lot of people. People, even to this day, I wish you would do food reviews. I wish you did Sunday Night Live. As much as you would like me to do it, I don't want to do something that my heart is not behind. I would... It would come across in the videos I'm just faking it. I'm just trying to pretend I enjoy it. It's pretty easy to tell when I enjoy something and when I don't. I'm pretty transparent. My facial expressions do tell a lot. So if I'm not behind something wholeheartedly, I really don't want to do it. So all I can say is that they were fun while they lasted, but it's not something I plan on doing going forth. But you never know what can spawn up in the future. If something was to happen where we had another lockdown, I may come up with a new live stream series. If I had good content to go live with. I may do that in the future or may add something new as far as content wise to the channel as long as it fits the mold of my channel. But I also have learned a lot on my channel. I've learned a great deal of things that there's a lot of highs and lows when it comes to having a channel. Number one, you are forced to grow a thick skin. People are going to be critical. They're going to criticize. They're going to give you what they call constructive criticism or constructive feedback. Sometimes it's just plain down insults or complaining for no reason at all. So you are forced to grow a thick skin. Thankfully I have and I can let things just roll off my back where in the past I used to argue with people and try to defend myself and it got me nowhere. It just gave them more energy to keep coming at me. So I have learned to kind of just roll with the punches, go with the highs and lows and I can tell you that there are a lot of highs and lows. Some of the lows are pretty low. So much to the point that I almost considered quitting YouTube a few times just because things were down, you know, both views, um, content wise you know lacking ideas income wise so things were rough at times in the past but when the highs are really high you're like okay this is why i'm doing it this is why i want to keep doing it so i've learned to go with the highs and lows and that the lows are only temporary the highs really make it seem worth it to continue going forth i also learned from a lot of my mistakes i learned how to edit better i learned how to talk better in front of the camera i don't have to do as many outtakes or bloopers at the end I have learned just to kind of adapt to situations and kind of roll with the punches. So as much as I don't like change, change sometimes is inevitable. Sometimes the change is because I feel a change needs to be made. Sometimes the change is outside of my control and I'm forced to adapt to it. But at the end of the day, I persevered and pushed on because what I do is something I'm passionate about and enjoy doing and want to continue doing. So despite things not always going how I want them to go, I think in the end it works out. And the fact that my channel has grown to where it is, surpassing 200K, it shows that my changes have worked. You know, despite people complaining about no longer being live, no longer doing food reviews, I'm still putting out content that people enjoy. Yeah, people have come and go, viewers have come and go, but at the end of the day, my channel does continue to grow. My views are averaging higher than they used to, and I really have nothing to complain about. <coughs> One final thing I do wanna say though, and this is just my own personal feelings is that reaching 200K in the larger spectrum of YouTube, it's just a drop in the bucket compared to what other channels have. But I don't compare myself to any other channel. I'm not in competition with any anyone else on YouTube. I'm only in competition with myself and I compare myself to where I began. I began with nothing at zero subscribers and I grew to where I am today because of perseverance and hard work. I never once worked with a larger channel to get plugged or publicized or shouted out. I've never asked for shout outs or help from other channels. I've done everything I've done on my own. I've learned from my mistakes. I've made changes when necessary. I learned how to get better at editing, better at talking, better at telling a story in the videos. So I've accomplished what I've accomplished solely on my own. There's not, not everyone could say that. 
some channels do get help and there's nothing wrong with that if they want to get help so be it I've gotten help in other areas and other parts of my life but when it comes to my channel I reached where I am today because of my dedication perseverance hard work learning from my mistakes and making changes when necessary for those of you who have a channel I do have a piece of advice for you maybe more than one namely solely is don't be afraid of change if something isn't working on your channel where your views are going down or you're lacking the growth in subscribers don't be afraid to make a change change sometimes is necessary and sometimes can be something that could bring new life to your channel whether it be a change in content a change in a channel name a change in editing a change in starting or stopping something don't be afraid of change people that change and adapt and push through are the ones that are going to succeed the ones that rely on clickbait stuff trying to get a viral video trying to get plugged from a larger channel you're going to grow much slower if not at all don't rely on that type of stuff put in the hard work put in the dedication and understand that youtube success is a marathon and not a race it took me 14 years to get here so that's a perfect i'm a perfect example as to potentially how long it could take some people get there faster some people get there longer some people never get there but i felt that i succeeded and got to where i am at the time it was supposed to happen with that being said i want to thank you for listening to everything i said because this was an important part of why i came here today to celebrate to enjoy the moment to say thank you to all of you without you guys i wouldn't have this channel and have the growth that I have and the viewers that I have. I have some of the best viewers on the YouTube platform. Some of you have been here for a very long time. Some of you not at all, but speaking of which, if you are still watching and you do leave a comment, which I hope you do, tell me when you started watching my videos. I am curious to see how long you've been here, but I know there's some people that have been here from the beginning. A lot of people came in the last few years, but regardless of how long you're here, I do appreciate you very, very much. You are a part of my community, part of my world. And although we don't go live nearly anymore, I do always look forward to your comments. And I talk to you guys like I am right now as if you are here with me. I always try to make it feel like you're included with me. And those who do watch and don't comment, well, thank you for watching. At the very least, giving my videos a thumbs up means a lot. It lets me know that you enjoy the content that I do. And I do have a lot of exciting things planned for the future. And a lot of things I am very fortunate for. I am in a position where I can travel sometimes. I go on adventures, I go exploring, I review new products, I meet new people, so I am very fortunate to what I have been able to do solely because of my YouTube channel, because of the viewers that watch my videos. So I hope you enjoyed my celebration day here in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania on the Reading and Northern Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway, specifically the open air car, which is one of my favorite cars to ride on. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my milkshake, enjoy the rest of my day, and more importantly, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.